All right, last type of acid-base reaction. We're going to be looking now at when weak acids and weak bases react with one another. So it tells us to assume that we have equal molar amounts of a weak acid and weak base reacting with one another. It's going to be in a one-to-one -one ratio, as you'll see from our balanced equation that we're going to write in just a second here. So when you have equal molar amounts, in other words, if you have one molar of acetic acid, you've got one mole of ammonia reacting. If you have two moles, you've got two moles. Um, so it's another way of saying, hey, we're at the equivalence point. We're at that stoichiometric ratio point. So just like in those other reactions, we have to look at how each component is impacted by water. So when you put the weak acid component, acetic acid, in water, it's going to ionize and turn into some hydronium and some acetate ions. The ammonia reacts with water to make some ammonium ions and some hydroxide. And then the hydronium ions from step one and the hydroxide ions from step two can react with one another to make water. If you want to think about this in a Hess's Law kind of way, if we add those three reactions together, you have your hydronium will cancel out, your hydroxide cancels out, and your water cancels out to leave you with that net reaction. Uh, we have that first K there is uh, a Ka, the acetic acid reacting with water. Uh, the second one, the K2 there, that's a Kb value, ammonia reacting with water. And then the third one is a, uh, since it's the reverse of the auto ionization of water, we take the inverse of Kw. So what if we wanted to figure out the K net for that reaction there underneath that bar with acetic acid and ammonia reacting to make acetate and ammonium? When we add reactions together, you'd multiply their K values together. And so when we do that, you get 32,400, a product's favored reaction, and it always goes towards the weaker acid and base. Well, would the products of a weak acid, weak base reaction impact the pH? So our weak acid doesn't really ionize too much. It stays mostly in acetic acid form. So that's why you see HC2H3O2 as your reactant there. And then our ammonia is a weak base. It doesn't really ionize too much. It stays mostly as NH3. So that's why we just have NH3 written there and not ammonium and hydroxide ions. When those guys react, your acetic acid acts as a proton donor, leaving behind the acetate ion and the hydronium ion. And we, or excuse me, the ammonium ion. And we have to see, do each of those ions, do they have an impact on pH? The acetate does can because the acetate can accept protons from the water. Water's floating around in there, right? All these solutions are aqueous. And so when something is floating around in water, it has the potential for reacting with that water. So the acetate ion ends up impacting pH. The hydronium, I keep saying hydronium, ammonium ion also has an impact on pH because it could donate protons to the water. So now we kind of have a real mess. If we want to think about what's in that flask at the equivalence point. So we're going to use up all the original acetic acid and ammonia because if we're at the equivalence point, we react according to the stoichiometry. There's no limiting reactants. There's no excess reactants. There's products only. The problem is, is that those two products, both of them can react with water to make extra, extra stuff. So let's see. When we look, there's the water. Then we have the acetate ion that gets formed from our original reaction and the 
ammonium ion that gets formed from the original reaction. Next up, there's that reaction between the acetate ion and water. If you react the acetate ion and water, you get additional acetic acid and hydroxide. But you also have the reaction between the ammonium ion reacting with water to make ammonia and H3O+. It's a big list of stuff in there when you mix a weak acid with a weak base because you have all those secondary reactions going on. The original reactants are all used up, so anything that you see there is either a product from the original reaction or a product from secondary reactions with water. These extra ions might impact the pH. When you look at what's floating around in there, the thing that determines pH is either OH- or H3O plus ions floating around in solution, right? Well, we have both of them. We have extra hydroxide being formed and we have extra hydronium being formed. So do they cancel each other out or does the acid win or does the base win? What's the pH at the equivalence point? The good news is, is that you won't have to do any kind of big math problem for a weak acid, weak base reaction, uh, kind of like we went through those six steps earlier. You're not going to have to do that with a weak acid, weak base where you're doing ice tables and everything else. But um, you might be asked to predict which way it's going to lean without doing all the math behind it. So how are you going to know? When you mix those equal amounts, moles, of a weak base and weak acid, so you're at that stoichiometric uh, point, you match the stoichiometry, you get the conjugate base, the conjugate acid, they both can react with water, and so what you're going to look at is the Ka value and the Kb value. And when you're looking at the Ka and the Kb, if the Ka ends up being greater than the Kb, then the solution's going to be acidic because we're going to end up making relatively more H3O plus ions than we are hydroxide ions from the Kb reaction. If the Ka ends up being less than the Kb, the solution's going to end up being basic because that means we're going to end up making more hydroxide than we do hydronium. And if there's more hydroxide than hydronium, it'll end up being basic in the end. If your Ka equals your Kb, then we'll be making the same amounts of hydronium and hydroxide, and then therefore they'll cancel each other out and the solution will be neutral overall.